I actually wanted to go over my last video. No, my second, the short film that I made uploaded a few videos ago, just going over it, reviewing it, what I would do differently and kind of what I learned from it. Because one, obviously I can learn a lot from this and I'm sure from me talking about my mistakes, I'm pretty sure you can learn something too. So let's get into it. We'll watch it again. If you haven't seen it, then the link is here. Um, and yeah, we're just going to go through it and just kind of break it down, not every scene by scene, but just kind of go through it and see, point out key things that I know I could have done better, would have done differently, and just see it go from there. So here we go. First off, I'm pretty sure that title isn't actually in the center of the frame. Like, it's just slightly too low. Like, it might be my OCD, but I'm pretty sure it's not actually in the center of the frame. Yeah, so great start. Another thing I would have done there, when I was actually shooting the scene at Annie's house with the kind of B-roll of her getting ready for her YouTube stuff, I would actually remember to bring my light. You had to kind of you know, use one of her lights, but not a rude way, but your lights aren't the best. Um, just, you know, you can see that the harsh shadows and just that kind of thing. So I would remember to bring my own equipment. Again, I wouldn't rush it as much. I did kind of rush this whole process. I made this, what, in like two and a half days. But yeah gear doesn't matter that much like it doesn't look terrible it's just a personal preference i don't really like seeing harsh shadows or something i would have done differently there my name is Annie. again you can kind of see the shadows on the wall you can see that the harsh lighting is just something i wouldn't have there because you know you like to have that natural lighting instead of looking making it obvious that you have an artificial light being used obviously in this situation here like i'm doing now it's obviously an artificial light is being used but in a situation like this, something I've just learned from watching a lot of people, watching a lot of films, you never really want to make it obvious that you're using an artificial light. You kind of want to make it look like it's natural light as much as possible. So that's just something I would do. Just All it is is simply just getting a bigger softbox or um, you know, a larger source of light. You know, the larger the source, the softer the source. So yeah, simple as that. Annie, Annie Pearl on YouTube and I make videos. <laughs> One thing I would also do differently, wow, this is a lot differently than that 30 seconds in. In the same way I said how I rushed it, you can kind of see if you, you know, go back to this last clip of her running, um, the first clip of her running, they were actually shot on different dates and you can actually tell, um, you know, this is again, me maybe being a perfectionist, but you can kind of tell that these are different. So you can see how green the grass is in this scene compared to how green the grass is here. Because obviously this morning went out, went out a lot earlier and it was very frosty outside, it was very cold, that I really liked that scene and that day a lot better. However, I didn't get all the clips that I wanted. One, because we were freezing, and two, I didn't plan it out as well as I'd liked. But again, you know, we work with what we've got and it still came out okay. For me, lockdown kind of gave me that kickstart into actually being able to like better myself. And it kind of was the thing that made me have no excuse, but to actually go out. And so with the um, the angles that I have here, um, you know, this second angle and the main first angle, I would actually position them slightly differently. So the first one, um, you know, where I have her, the main shot of her in the middle, I would actually put her further to the left and kind of make it the rule of thirds kind of thing. Um, and then the next shot for the next, the second angle this angle here i would have that more of a close-up for one at less of a wide angle so it's not so much a side profile but a bit more coming right at her face and have less going on because there's a lot of distractions and there's a lot of stuff inside the frame and i know at the time i was thinking it makes sense because that's the kind of stuff that's annie you know that forms her kind of lifestyle you know you have her laptop there her camera there the content creation life and the kind of stuff she's about behind that but in reflection I'd probably do it closer so it's more of just like her face more as opposed to being 
are seen re- revealing things. You do. So for me, that was really focusing on my fitness and starting to actually seriously get into content creating. Training and fitness helped me a lot during this time because it's kind of what gave me that structure to my days because it's all well and good having time at your disposal but if you don't have that structure you can quite easily fall into quite like a bad mental and physical health so fitness and training for me kind of broke up the days and allowed me to just like track my progress yeah so that's something i've noticed quite a lot as well it's just how i faded the music in and out i would have probably made it a lot more gradual that's what, yeah so I don't, it's, I feel like it comes in too harsh, you know, even though it is like a gradual build up, but it's still for me in my ears, it's just a bit too harsh. I'd probably even have the music still in the background playing, but just put it really, really low, even while she's talking, just so it's not completely silent. And it's like, it almost disrupts the pace of the film, you know, instead of building up because the kind of point of it progress while she's talking about her progression and everything there, we are kind of progressing to the top of the hill that's the kind of main theme of this so you know we're doing all of this stuff down below we're running we're stretching we're doing all these kind of exercises down below but then we are slowly building up to the top and i feel every time i got her to no every time i put her talking it kind of did slow down the pace slow down the thing of the of that you know sequence so that's something i would have probably done next time is just still have the music playing but just put it really low just so the pace of the whole film isn't really being disrupted by her talking all of these smooth shots as well done on the one wheel video coming very soon but very smooth I chose to go down the route of creating content at first um, for other people because a lot of my friends would tell me like, oh, you like you. Yeah, I would definitely get rid of that transition. Like, I'm not really sure why I put it in, to be honest. It kind of, yeah, I don't like it. I, for me, a lot of the time now that I've made a lot more videos, the all the different kind of transitions you see on YouTube and like you learn when you first start editing, I think you that you think looks so cool more times than not they almost ruin the film they make it look kind of childish they make it look like you just tried to throw in effects to make it look better so that's something i actually wouldn't but again i'd definitely remove something like that sometimes it works like you do see in um things like this i remember when we used to watch the arrow they always used to do these kind of transitions and in a lot of different movies they do it but i think it's for a very specific type of thing when it's you know something that's quite professional or something quite serious these kind of transitions, they they take your attention off what you're actually meant to be looking at. Like people notice that transition and people are oh, whoa. But then they're now focused on the transition and not what the film, what they're watching is actually about. So transitions are great, but not if they take away from the actual video. So that's yeah, something I would definitely take out and just have more, maybe not a hard cut, maybe a crossfade, just something where it's just something that is seamless and people don't actually have to think about it and they can keep their attention still on film know a lot about that topic like that could really help a lot of people if you speak up on that and so at first it was just kind of me wanting to speak on those topics that kind of could help other people so it was all kind of like self-help videos and stuff that I was doing initially and then gradually it got to a point where it wasn't just that I was doing it for other people it was something that actually I wanted to do for myself because it was like a creative outlet for me and it was training that helped this shot as well um, I wouldn't have placed it here because you can kind of see how we're at the top of the hill. Um, and obviously, we're not actually meant to be at that point. So in reflection, I don't know why I put this in again. I shouldn't have rushed it. I should have waited a bit longer. I double checked the shots all the way through. I wouldn't have put this particular shot. Nothing wrong with the shot. Her doing squats, that's fine. But it's more, you can kind of see we're at the top of the hill. Obviously, looking at this now, you don't know that is the top of the hill. But once you get further on in the film, you see her running up there. So it's kind of like, She's really there, how are we now up here? So the ordering just doesn't make, doesn't quite make sense there. Physically and mentally be able to actually use content creation as my creative outlet. Again, you can see that she's on top of the hill, yeah. 
progress to me is being able to look back on myself in every aspect so physically mentally spiritually whatever and be able to see that change so i might not see the progress happening in the moment like whilst it's happening but it's being able to look back and see that growth and that change so here we have the, the running bit that's what's starting to really build up but the pace has obviously stopped quite a bit because of that and then you can kind of see as well here once we've got to the top of the hill so why i would have put another clip in between so you can see from running on the floor running halfway up the hill or maybe more of an establishing shot of her running up the hill maybe with the drone or something could have got that but um yeah the main thing from this these two shots here and here is you can just see how we're on completely different days you know the sun is rising here where it's a very overcast day here and that's just something i didn't like too much but i had to kind of had to work with what we had we couldn't reproduce the weather the weather on the first day we shot was perfect you know we had that nice frosty icy feel um with the sun slowly rising which is when we did get the drone shots that worked well but then the next day you know the clouds like you could even see different clouds it was just one big overcast day um so yeah it wasn't the best so that's something i would have made sure to really nail just plan my shots better so on the day that we did have the better weather the better conditions we can get all the shots there and we don't have to go out and reshoot Yeah, so that last drone shot, I mean, I know six obviously because I'm there and maybe people who know the area know, but the last drone shot wasn't actually on the same hill as where we actually got the uh, original, um, you know, where she actually got to the top where she was running up. Because for some reason, at like half seven in the morning, everyone feels the need to start running up the hill, like their morning exercise, like, it's cold, go home, chill um but yeah so that was a little bit annoying we couldn't go on the same hill otherwise we really had a load of people up there and it definitely would have ruined the shot um but yeah something that came out okay so really from what i've learned from all of this is simply just one plan your shots better that's a definite plan them better have a better idea of what you're looking to shoot um what angles you're kind of get like just simple stuff because when you try and kind of think of it on the spot that's when you end up making these kind of silly mistakes uh, and two, just make sure you double check your shots and make sure it's all in order, make sure you do it. And what I didn't do, because obviously I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't double check them, but what I made the mistake of doing is just watching and watching and watching it. I didn't have a long enough break. You know, I did have a few breaks here and there where I did take some time, look, came back with fresh eyes, but I should have had maybe just leave it for the day, wait, have a sleep and then come back and look at it just so you're coming back with a mindset of oh i haven't been staring this all day or coming completely fresh and you know your brain's kind of refreshed from it just so you do get a better perspective and you can point out mistakes that i'm pointing out now because i've had time to go over i've had time to really look back at it after you know watching other things and taking my mind off it completely so yeah that's pretty much it um that's what i wanted to go over really so again this is low-key a selfish video just me kind of going over my mistakes but me going over my mistakes is also giving you something that you can also make sure you prevent in your next creative piece whether it's a film documentary whatever it is and i keep calling this a film but is it a film is it a documentary like whatever it is i created it so um yeah that's all for me today hope you guys enjoyed this hope you learned something if you did maybe just drop a like and subscribe down below i really do appreciate it and i